Welcome back to the live stream, guys. My name is Bruce Wang. In today's video, we're going to be going over some of the stocks that I'll be buying during this correction, crash, um, slide, whatever you want to call this, whatever's going on in the markets right now, because it's not a good feeling. It's really not a good feeling. So I decided to come on live here, share with you guys what I'm planning on buying. Did Jerome crash the market? Did Jerome? Great question from Say. Maybe he did. I watched um, some analysts from Meet Kevin of uh, that meeting that he had. And uh, Bruce is balling so hard, we might have to change his last name to Wayne. Maybe, man. That's the goal. That's a, that's a dream. He basically, Jerome Powell just basically came out. Let me see if I can find some articles here. If you guys haven't already, um, jump into the Discord if you guys haven't. You guys can also sign up for the Patreon, and uh, you can have some fun in the Discord here. We have a lot of uh, people in the Discord going off on uh, some GME talk. Jerome, is that how you spell it? G J E R O M E. Stock turned lower after Powell's comments. Fed Chair Powell says economic reopening could cause inflation to pick up. Uh, Fed Chair Jerome Powell at the Wall Street Journal Jobs Summit. Um, Meet Kevin covers Jerome Powell on a, uh, a re in a really great way and is able to analyze all this economic stuff. Me, <laughs> dude, a lot of this stuff that they talk about just goes way over my head. Yo, we got Jarhead in the house. Welcome to the live stream, my guy. What's up, guys? So let's jump into the portfolio here. Let's see. Oh, it's not even open. Uh, we're going to jump into the Weeble account, Weeble portfolio. And I do believe that Jerome Powell's comment did cause some of the um, fear in the markets as we are seeing them right now. Open this up real quick. And I haven't sold anything. All right, guys. We're going to be getting right to it. I'm going to let you guys know exactly what I'm buying. Um, if you guys made it to this morning's live stream, you guys saw that I bought a lot of different things. <laughs> uh, basically, whatever that I'm down on when it comes to my portfolio, that is what I'm buying more of. All right. So as my positions in my portfolio continues to go down, I'm... I'm slowly ramping up as the the more that they go down. So, for example, uh, let's say with Tesla, right? A company like Tesla, this could drop into the five hundred dollar range, four hundred dollar range, very easily in a in a crash. All right, we've seen it last year. Last year, March twenty twenty, things just instantly dropped, just like that. A lot of people's portfolio was down twenty, thirty, forty percent, easy. And, um, you know, Tesla is, if Tesla, one of the highest, most highest flying growth stock in the entire market, uh, this can easily see 400. Some people are even saying three, three to maybe even two, if there was like a full on market crash. So as the price starts to tumble down here, we can see it touched like a 600 like if it goes to 500, I'm going to be buying more. If it goes to 400, I'm going to be buying a lot more. If it goes to 300, I'm going to be buying a lot more. Uh, that's just my thoughts on Tesla right now. So that's how I'm planning to do it. Um, a lot of people have been um, talking about Tesla. Let's look at GME. GME's been popping off, guys. Way to go for all you diamond handers. GME is sitting at $140. It's the only thing that's up today, up $16, uh, 13%. Is this a full-on market crash? I believe that it's a long overdue correction. All right. We've seen, let's take a look at, um, I don't know which is the best place to look at all the indices. Can we find it here? All right, here we go. This looks kind of good. Can you guys see that? We're basically looking at it in here. 
So the S&P 500 is down um, 1%. The Dow Jones is down 1%. The Nasdaq is down you know, uh, almost 2%. So whenever the Nasdaq drops 2%, we see Tesla drop, what, what was that, 4%? Let me, t let me jump back into Tesla really quickly. Yeah, we see Tesla jump jumping down 4 to 5%. So it's exponential when it comes to um, the markets. I don't think that this is a crash, all right? Uh, it is a slight pullback. I would say a crash or a correction would be, you know, 10 plus percentage points. This is just a, you know, a healthy pullback, uh, trying to shake out all of the paper hands, and then we should be getting back to our regular business. But it's just so fascinating that G G GameStop, out of every other company out there, GameStop is doing the best. And uh, that's completely hilarious to me. So we got one hour on this live stream. Welcome, guys. We got 300 people, 350 people in here. I'm selling GME too much crap. Uh, I feel you. I feel you. If you sell, what's your cost basis? I think selling it now might not be the worst idea. Might be an all right idea. Unless they don't let you buy Tesla. What's up, guys? Vic is saying only stock to buy during a market crash is GME. I mean, if you're thinking about buy high, sell low, maybe that's the, that's the way to go about it. We got Red saying he has 30% profits. Oscar says, wait until Tesla hits, I mean, wait until GME hits $200. I mean, which which company would you rather have in the next 10 years? Would you have, would you rather have one share of Tesla or one share of GME? Let me know how much you guys are down today, if you guys are down. And if you're up, let me know if you guys are up as well. Buy some VGAC. I think I do have some of that. Uh, me personally, I'm down like three to four percent on my entire portfolio. And man, my eyes been twitching all day today. We got some people down twenty percent. Cecilio down sixty. <laughs> We got people down 7k z blaze is down 30 percent my god what are you guys buying i'm down 10 percent. you guys are getting crushed out there all right so like i said i me personally i'm only down um let's take a look here let's go simply safe so you guys can see my entire portfolio I mean, I guess it's good to be a bit diverse in this situation, guys. So, uh, oh, wow, we got a super chat. First super chat of the day. It's all right to be diverse, all right? Being diverse is not going to it's not gonna hurt too bad. We're seeing a 2.2% decline here. Let's jump into this uh, Muhammad. Man, you left me a great long message here. Look into TPL for long-term investing. It's my biggest position at 230K. Easy 30% year over year. It's undervalued. I worked with them before. Oh, is this some insider trading, Muhammad? Uh, let's let's not do insider trading on the channel. I, I'm not trying. <laughs> I'm not trying to uh, get called on by the uh, SEC. TPL. I can definitely look at this for you. 200. Oh man, 200. And thirty thousand. Is that right? Two hundred and thirty thousand invested. My God, dude, that's my entire portfolio right there. Um, TPL Texas Pacific, sitting at uh, one thousand seven hundred and seventy-five dollars. So I'm um, assuming you have like two hundred shares in this. Man, you are going big for these companies. Let's see what this company does. Texas Pacific Land Corp is engaged in managing land, including royalties, interest for the benefits of its owners, companies, operating segments, and land and resource management and water services operations. The company 
operates as a landowner in Texas. Approximately 880, 880,000 acres of land in West Texas. West Texas. All right. Okay. Um, geez, this is massive, dude. And uh, you said that you worked with them before. Is it so? It's just land. It's not a, like an oil company. Normally, all the big companies from Texas have stuff to do with oil. Let's take a look at somebody financials. I mean, you're saying it was a uh, year over year. It doesn't look that good. The year over year is actually down. Hopefully, I'm looking at the correct company, dude. Uh, what does the analyst say? Analysts, some analysts saying it's 1,700. Some are saying 130. Some are saying under 1,000. It's a strong buy. It's got, it got mixed. It's mixed. Definitely, this is really interesting. I've never seen... Uh, it's uh, one of these companies that you don't see often, right? You don't see... Typically, people trying to shill some uh, penny stocks on here. So it's a, it's a refresher to see a company with a valuation like this. So let's take a look. Uh, market cap, $9 billion. So you got a decent size, decent size company here. It's worth taking a look at if any of you guys are interested in um, looking at that. Oh, you guys can't even see. We got another super chat here. Do you feel UVXY options is a good play? Um, if you have to ask me, if a certain option play is a good play, I'm pretty sure you should not be trading um, option plays. Um, shorting the VIX is like a shorting the VIX is a popular term. A lot of people say because shorting the VIX in the long term, uh, in my opinion, you might be able to make some money doing that because in the long term, like the the stock market goes up like 70 percent of the time. So shorting the VIX might be a good play. Buying some puts. Yeah. Look at their financials and margins. They lease their lands and take royalties for every gallon. Man, Muhammad. Muhammad, dude. TPL. Just looking at some of the quarterlies here for uh, for last year, even during through the pandemic, man, they should be making a lot more after the pandemic's done and over. Other non-operating income here, we got some positive numbers here. Are you guys hearing that? Let me cancel out of this. I mean, this does look like a solid company, Mohammed. Um, I like the stock so far. I just have to keep, keep an eye on it. Um, it's currently in the over, you know, it is over uh, overbought at the moment. All right. You might want to take some profits if you're up a lot on this company. If it's an oil company, though, maybe that's why it's so doing so well today. Everything in the oil sector is doing crazy good. Like ExxonMobil for me. It's uh, one of my best positions today. Um, let's go and uh, celebrate this sad moment by of losing money. I live in MA2 and I will buy drinks. Anton, I might I might take you up on that. I might take you up on that. We're opening up here in Texas 100% on March 10th. Yes, I saw that. I saw that. I, um, I heard... There's going to be no more mask uh, requirements or anything in Texas. Everything can open up 100%. It should be good to move to Texas right now and uh, live free like an American should. Bruce should be, you, want, you guys want me to buy drinks? Maybe. Dude, what do you, do you guys want to do a meetup during a pandemic? <laughs> do a meetup during the pandemic? That would be, that'd be hilarious, dude. Bruce being super reliable with these live streams. So we're doing two a days. If it's one hour long, I, I'm 100% sure I should be able to get these going. But if it's longer than one hour, dude, my eye is twitching. Like I'm staring at the screen way too long. Just feels like I'm talking to myself sometimes as well. Let's 
We got 600 people here. Uh, what did you guys come to see? Some of the stocks that I'll be buying during this dip um, are is going to be Peloton, Alibaba, and Tesla. And as they continue to get corrected and um, become less, as the price goes down even more, I'm going to be exponentially buying into them. I do have some cash saved up to buy more, but uh, it, I am running thin on that. Thoughts on GME right now? Dude, GME is doing amazing right now. Uh, GME is making me feel like I did a bad thing by selling. But emotionally, um, being not involved with this uh, crazy ex-girlfriend of a stock, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good. Dude, I'm hearing some beeping from my uh, computer and I have no idea what that is. All right, man, our live stream is in full swing. We have 600 people in here. Welcome to the live stream, guys. I'm not going to be begging for likes every time, but if you guys are willing, drop one, smash it. How is GME still popping off? They got a cult-like following. It's a stock with a cult-like following. If you're on uh, Wall Street Bets, 9 million people, I would say 80% of them are invested <laughs> in uh, GME right now. Dude, Mohammed with the oil money, dude. Let's go. Yo, why don't you guys come over to my place in Seaport in Boston? Let's have a beer sometime. Mohammed, drop me a DM. And uh, definitely, I would love to check out your place. Drop me a DM. I'm in Boston maybe once or twice a week. Drop me a DM on my Instagram. Uh, Instagram name is Bruce Wang. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of fake Bruce Wang accounts. So let me drop it in the... Yeah, man, you, if you're going to be shouting out your restaurant or your bar, I'm definitely going to come. And uh, I'm definitely going to come for drinks, dude. 100%. Here, man, drop me a DM. And uh, definitely, I will. I'll t I might take you up on that. Guys, don't panic. All right? Don't panic. We don't know where the bottom is. We don't know where, where all the high, the high of the entire stock market is. If you're holding positions, like I, I'm holding positions for three to five years, I'm not too worried with the day-to-day -day stuff. If it continues to slowly go down, I'm just going to slowly buy more and more into these companies. What's a Gucci boy? Hey, Bruce, how do you like Weeble so far? So Weeble, if you guys don't know, I'm using Weeble now. And uh, this is Weeble. I have, <laughs> every single time I check this, the price continues to go down. Let me uh, get rid of this real quick. So I'm sitting at se just under 17,000. I'm liking it. It's good. A bit complicated because you're just, you're just overloaded with so many numbers and so many uh, features. Some people are going to like that. Some people are not going to like that. Um, you know, when you're doing research on some stocks as well, this is massive, massive features. It's good and bad, right? If you're just like a newbie trying to jump into a, 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 play, a brokerage like this, it's going to be a lot more complicated. It's going to be a lot more to find out. But overall, Weeble is great. No complaints other than uh, they could upgrade their user interface just a little bit. Maybe have like a basic and an advanced version. I think uh, that would help a lot. I think it's always a good time to buy some Apple. Let's take a look at Apple. Here we go. Apple sitting at 120. I think my average cost for Apple is like at $90. So, like I said, I'll probably wait for it to dip and buy more. Buy the dips. Buy the dips. Dude, Muhammad is, is in the clutch with the diamond hands, dude. Any of your favorite dividend stocks drop by today? All right, man. I'm going to show you guys my dividend portfolio real quick. Give me a second. Uh, here we go.
I'm pretty consistent this week with the live streams. Hopefully you guys are enjoying it. So I reinvest into this dividend portfolio regularly. Uh, I have to invest more though during these um, during these times. I've been getting some crazy comments, guys. Dividend investing sucks. That's like the most basic comment that I've been getting. And I'm just like, a lot of people don't understand. After they get crushed in this uh, market correction, I think you guys will start to understand why I love dividends so much. Whenever you speculate on growth stocks, sometimes your growth stocks don't grow and they continue to fall. And that's going to happen. 100% is going to happen to all of you. It, ha is, it happens to me all the time. No one here is a you know, Nostradamus, can predict the future, knows exactly what company to buy and profit off of. None of us do. We just make our best guesses with the information that we have. And um, yes, over the last, in all of 2020, it's been one of the greatest years to be an investor. Almost, you can just buy anything and you would have been up 20%. So the years that are going to be poor performing years, maybe this year is going to be one of them. It seems like it so far. Uh, you're going to be glad you invested a little bit into dividend stocks. All right, so in my dividend portfolio, links are going to be in the description. You guys can see my entire portfolio. Um, on this portfolio, I'm only down 1.5%, so not too bad. Um, if you guys want to take a look at all of my holdings, links are going to be in the description for my entire holdings here. I only have 27 positions in here. Um, you know, Let's see. The biggest position here, the biggest growth is Tesla, JP Morgan, Caterpillar. JP Morgan, it took me a while to get... Man, this police car outside, dude. So these are the companies, man, that I'm going to be buying into. I only have two companies in here that are not dividend payers, Amazon and Tesla. So you guys can't fault me on that. But everything else is legit. And, um, you know, if we take a wider look into my portfolio... I'm, I'm going to see $5,243, no matter what. That's just going to be pocket money. And I can reinvest that. I could spend it on whatever I want. So, yeah, cops are coming for me because of Muhammad, man, with the insider trading. Dude, Muhammad, what what you get me into, buddy? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to jail, hopefully. That's what I'm saying. Insider trading. They they're catching me for uh, supposedly I'm a, a suit now because I'm a paper hand GME. Are dividend taxed? Yes, dividends are taxed as uh, ordinary income. So one way to avoid this is to invest in dividend stocks in your Roth IRA, where your gains and your dividends will be uh, you know you don't get taxed on it. You're paying taxes before you invest into it. GS and LMT for the win in my portfolio, in any portfolio. How do you minimize taxes? Um, you know, I think becoming a real estate investor to own some properties, that's one good way. Uh, being a business owner, that's one good way. Uh, investing in retirement accounts is another good way. Qualify taxes, yes, that's something uh, I miss often. 10% correction coming in the fall. I think it might already be here, man, in the last few weeks. You can save taxes buying an electric car. You get some credits by the, by the city. Uh, let's see what happens when I get the uh, Cybertruck. We got Tiago making some money off of dividend stocks. So, quick question. Do you guys use TikTok? Do you guys use TikTok? I am, uh, I started a TikTok account. I think a lot of you guys might be too old to be using TikTok. Let's make an NFT. Oh, NFT. Hopefully, that just did not demonetize my. Um. Give me a second. All right. That's not, that's a no. 
All right, nobody here is doing TikTok. Okay, just wondering. So SAP is giving me a dono. Any formula for taking small profits? So a formula for that I use is if I'm up like 100%, I would, or if I'm itchy, you know, I feel like I need to do something, I would take maybe 1% to 5%. Or another way is, you know how you dollar cost average into a position? You can dollar cost average your way out of out of a position. And uh, that way you can take some profits as uh, some, of your, some of your position is going down in value. That's what I did with uh, GME. Thank you for the dono, man. Appreciate it. We have 700 people in here. So... Uh, let's reset the room and let everybody know what I'll be buying in this dip. So the main companies that I bought today are Tesla, Peloton, and Alibaba. I did very small buys. I just bought a few. I bought a few shares of each, and that was it. So let me know what you guys are buying on this uh, dip, on this correction or crash. However, you guys might want to say it. Man, we got. Matei buying silver ETFs, real silver. I I'm not too big on silver. If you if you ask me silver versus gold, I would be buying gold. Should I put one thousand into AMC or one thousand into Tesla? <sighs> um, if I if it was me and I had a thousand bucks, I would put in like a two fifty into AMC, two fifty into Tesla, and I would do that over. You know, two to three weeks. You know, just you can split it up and just uh, slowly invest it into a company. That's what I would do. Square is down big as well today. Square, I would be really careful looking at Square. Uh, let me show you a screenshot. I would be really careful buying into Square, guys. Be really careful buying into Square. Square is sitting at $217. My average cost for Square is roughly $160. So the last time I probably bought Square was months ago. It was around this area. And I just let it ride. I let it ride all the way up here. So don't panic in these times, all right? If you're holding some crazy penny stocks, yeah, maybe you guys should be panicking. But if you guys are holding companies that in five years from now they're, they're going to be doing good i wouldn't panic too much sft small version of carvana reports on friday we saw this we took a look at this yesterday i'm going to be looking i'm going to be waiting for that uh report i'm going to be waiting for that report because carvana is a beast and um it's if sft can have some type of market share with that industry uh definitely dude exxon mobile I know you guys don't want to see my Robinhood portfolio, but I got to show you some gains, give you guys some hope. I'm up almost 4% on ExxonMobil, 1,000% today. So this one company is saving my butt today. Average cost sitting at 43 bucks. I've been telling people to get in on the energy sector way back when, all right? Way back when, $43. Average cost, man. That's so low. Um, dividend is going to be coming in about five five to six days. I'm going to be seeing $435 in dividends. I wish I had dividend hands. Dividend hands. Bitcoin. The only crypto that I own is Bitcoin. The only one that I'm considering buying into is Flow from Dapper Labs. I talked a lot about that on the live streams if you guys are interested. Brandon Lee, are dividends every month? If you own a uh, bunch of dividend companies, yes, it could be. You could be receiving dividends every month. Smart, good job. I mean, just having a diverse portfolio is going to do it for you. So you can have some growth companies. You can have some dividend companies. Dividend hand gangs doesn't doesn't sound right. Dividend hand gangs does not sound right. 
Realty income, is it on sale? I would say it's a little bit pricey still. Um, it is undervalued a little bit. So my average cost for realty income is 58 bucks. It's 59 bucks. So if this drops below my 58 bucks cost average, I would buy back into here. Um, already, I'm already 12K into this. Uh, definitely, you know, getting 50, I get about 50 bucks every single month from realty income. And, uh, you know, that 50 pays for my phone bill, pays for Netflix and all my subscriptions, the smaller ones at least. Dividend dudes doesn't sound right. Wang Gang, I like Wang Gang, but I don't think that's uh, brandable, if you guys know what I mean. I feel like that's uh, not family friendly. Uh, why do you think Neo is bigger or known more than Xping? I think Neo is a bigger company when it comes to I, I I don't know how much of it the Chinese government owns. Xping is I think a little bit newer as well, so I think that's another reason why I own some Xping through Alibaba. Alibaba owns like a a, a decent amount of Xping's company. See, once once you put the word Wang into anything. It just sounds a little bit weird, sounds a little bit off. Dividendies. Ah. My quality is worse for some reason. Oh, man. Jesus. Why didn't you guys tell me, dude? My bad, guys. My bad. I was talking through the microphone, the computer mic. My bad, dudes. That's what happens, man. I have to switch my mic when I come from uh, my home office to my studio office. My bad, guys. I must have, like, ripped your ears off. No wonder why no one's on here. Thoughts on AMC right now? We can take a look. So for anybody wondering, we're, we're trying to convert out of Robinhood. And uh, we're trying to go all in on Webull here, but it's... It's a little bit difficult transition still. Robinhood is really sticky since I have 120K in there. Robinhood, I mean, AMC sitting at, it's not doing good, dude. I've always been a bigger fan of GME than AMC. I mean, AMC, that's all Trey Trades. Trey Trades is all about AMC. I can't wait for this GME stuff to be over, honestly. I wish it would just go to the moon. And be done with it. Everybody would be good after. Good for you, man. Rina's buying some Neo. The mic is still sounding bad? No way. What is going on here? Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Does it sound better? Mike is good. All right. Mike sounds good, dude. Let's go. What's your opinion on AT&T? I'm always down for AT&T, man. AT&T is one of my biggest holdings. Let's jump right into it. So we had a we had some bad audio for 30 minutes. All right, guys. You should use my Webull code. I've already I already have Webull, so I'm good. We have some, uh, we got PD in the house trying to shill some pearl coin. What website is this? So say you say run, this is, we're on Webull. Links are going to be in the description. If you guys are interested in Webull, you can get two free stocks. So we already went over some of the companies that I'll be buying during this dip. It's don't panic sell into this, man. Do not panic sell into this, please.
Can you pin the stocks to buy? Jesus. Um, yeah, I guess I could. That's probably be a smart idea, huh? That that would be probably the smartest idea. Or someone could just tell him in the in the chat. There you go. Those are the companies I'm buying. All right, man. You got to give the people what they want. All right. So for anybody that is, you know, not on the live stream, I just pinned it to the chat so everybody can take a look. And I gave you guys a strategy on how to get into how I'm getting into them. So do you have any strategy for buying dividend stocks? Yes, I do have some strategies for buying dividend stocks. Uh, make sure you look into investment account, retirement accounts. That would be that would be the easiest way to buy into dividend stocks. So you guys don't get um, taxed out the uh, butthole. Other than that. You know, are you invested in Monster? I should be invested in Monster. I've seen a lot of uh, profile pictures with people drinking Monster now. I don't know. Dude, the way I bought, I started buying into dividend companies is just slow and steady. $100 a week. I just threw $100 a week at dividend stocks that I liked. Over time, it's going to grow. Over time, it's going to grow, man. Investing in the stock market, investing in general is going to be, once you start, you're really not going to want to put your money anywhere else. Because once you start seeing your money grow, not, you know, today is an exception. Once you see, start seeing your money grow and once you can start living off of it. Dude, I'm living off of my real, real estate, my rental properties. You know, I have a, it could burn down. Yeah, but yeah, I'll collect insurance on it. If it does burn down, but you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty comfortable right now. Thinking about going full-time YouTube. AT&T is dropping direct TV soon. Going to be a lot of dead weight off their backs. They're selling it for a deep discount. Does Alibaba pay dividend stocks? No. Alibaba is a um, growth company. It's the Chinese Amazon. And uh, they do as much as Amazon, but they're not getting Amazon love. Can you check out TRCH? Uh, I'm down 300 today. Keith. Keith Hoffman. Dude, your name sounds so familiar. TRCH. Uh, you're probably down a lot because it's a penny stock. So it's not, penny stocks are not a good look, man. And I hate it when people say Apple was a penny stock. So it's like, does that, what, what does that have to do with the penny stocks that are penny stocks right now? I don't know, man. I would not invest into, uh, invest into this. The company's too small. So it's going to be way, way too volatile. 300 million market cap. It's going to fluctuate way too much. Way too much for my, my risk tolerance. PayPal's good. I like PayPal. I'm already invested in a competitor, which is Square. So there's really no reason to go into PayPal if I'm in Square, right? I don't like uh, penny stocks because it's too much speculative. Yep, same here. TRCH is in a middle of a merger. Maybe that's why um, it's down a lot today. I've been in it since 146, but yeah, I wrote it up to $3.50. Take some profits. I would take some profits. The thing I've been saying is at least at minimum $1 billion market cap if you guys don't want like crazy, crazy volatility. How high do I think Alibaba could go? Alibaba right now, it's valued. 
Yeah, it's like Alibaba is one of the most undervalued companies out there. For some reason, it's not just not seeing any love. So some analysts are saying it's in the $400 range. I, I'm thinking it's more in the $300 range on average, right? So this is saying on Webull, it's saying it's $325 on average. On the low side, it's $250. You know, if you take a look at the financials, this is like phenomenal growth quarter over quarter. So I'm not really sure why it's not seeing as much love. The only thing I'm I'm seeing is that it's because it's a Chinese company, Chinese government, Chinese regulation. And because, you know, I'm thinking China is trying to beat America in every aspect when it comes to growth, especially growth of its companies. So see, this is, uh, I think this is just uninformed. Is Jack Ma even alive? Uh, I think uh, he is still alive, yes. Can the lemonade stand become a company on the stock market? Probably. Does anybody here, Phil Kim is wonder, Paul Kim is wondering if anybody here got any shares in BB. I feel like uh, that is a stock that's gone. I don't like Alibaba because they have too much fake and bootleg stuff, uh, way more than Amazon. I think a lot of Amazon products are made from China. Uh, mo most, mostly everything is made from China at this point. I think a lot of uh, Amazon stuff is coming from Alibaba. Rocket, is that still a thing? Man, we're, we're, we're running right through all these questions. Let's see, Rocket Company. I think, um, I, I know some people are starting to invest into Rocket Company on this dip here. So we're seeing, you know, the valuation here. It's a hold. A lot of people saying the average is roughly around 25. On the high end, it's 33. On the low end, it's uh, 18. You know, just when you, when you go into this analyst report on Weeble, just use this as a guide, right? As like a first step. And then you got to do more research into the company. And um, right here, we're seeing roughly fair value according to the analyst reports. I, ne I need to do more research into that to see exactly what it's worth. But uh, when I have time. Yo, we got Jarhead. He bought puts and call. I bought puts and calls on Rocket, LOL. So he's playing both sides of the field. And uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure he lost money on the calls, but made some money on the puts. Rocket needs to upgrade and uh, buy back. I believe they are doing a $1 billion buyback of their shares. And um, on top of that, you know, Dan Gilbert, I think that's his, the CEO's name. He's uh, he's doing a, a little short squeeze on, on, the, on the hedge funds. God. What's up, guys? We got a thousand people in here. If you guys are wondering what I bought on this dip today, I didn't buy crazy. All right, we just bought a little bit, um, a few share. I bought a few shares of Tesla, a few shares of uh, Peloton, and a few shares of Alibaba. So it's pinned in the comment section, so you guys can see it. It's all the way at the top there. I'm not going all in. I don't think anybody should be going all in on this uh, on this dip here because it could easily continue to rip down all right it could easily continue to rip down we don't know where the bottom is of this but i'm not panic selling um and i'm doing less speculation plays all right that is my message that i want to get out to everybody look for look for buying opportunities that's all you got to do and make sure these companies are legit legit I got a collab with Trey Trades again, man. Gorilla Gang strong. Uh, definitely, we are in chats. I DM'd him. He emailed me, and uh, we're we're in chat. We just need to figure out the scheduling. But he's a, I know 100% he's a workaholic. I need some stocks to invest that is uh, related to military, gun, armory, ammunition. Raytheon. <sighs> Take a look at Raytheon. Dude, a lot of people are really interested in Neo. Not really sure why. 
Today, Costco's reporting earnings. That's beautiful. I'm pretty sure they're going to do pretty well. CZIV sector is getting completely crushed. If you guys want to mix it up and, uh, you know, look for the smaller companies like NEO and CCIV, go for it. I'll be, uh, you know, keeping an eye on Tesla myself. I think ARK Invest is down like 20%. Let's take a look at that. ARK Invest, if you guys are looking for like massive growth opportunities, ARK Invest is one of those ETFs run by Kathy Woods. It's down 5% on the day. It's probably down, look at this, all-time high 160. So it's down about $40. Jeez, it's getting crushed. You guys just got to remember, though, even, you know, a few months ago, look, this all-time low was like at $33. So some things that you guys have to understand is a lot of people have been buying stocks on margin, myself included. So this, because people are buying stuff on margin, when they do a sell-off like this, you know, a lot of people are getting margin called, so they're basically paying back so they have less margin. So I think that's accelerating a lot of this uh, sell-off right now. So just that's just one thing to keep an eye out on. Um, for me personally, I wasn't that deep in margin, so I, I'm pretty good. Stocks on margin is a big no-no, especially if you're just beginning. If you really don't know what you're doing, don't buy stocks on margin. Um, I didn't touch my margin account until like two years into investing. And still, even till this day, I'm only using like a really small portion of um, a really small portion of my <laughs> paper hands. Bruce, I say that lovingly. Thanks for the content, bro. The Lioness McCoy. The Lioness McCoy. Where'd you get that, man? Where'd you get that name? When will you buy Tesla? I buy Tesla basically one share a day if I can. Slowly building up to position. If you had GME, would you sell or keep holding? I would, uh, I've already sold for a profit. Um, if you can sell for a profit, I would sell for a profit. If Shopify goes below 1,000, it's a, it's a big buy for me. Uh, let's take a look at Shopify. Shopify was one of those companies that um, it's just got away from me. I'm going to add this to the watch list as well. Shopify sitting at $1,149. If you guys don't know what Shopify is, it's basically one of the biggest e-commerce stores. On the high end, a lot of people are valuing e- um, Shopify at almost $2,000. Averagely, it's at around $1,400. On the low end, it's $500. So be very, really careful buying into this right now if you guys are. you know These guys have been killing it throughout the pandemic. Even prior to the pandemic, they were killing it. I just, I felt like whenever I was looking at it, it was at an all-time high. So I didn't really want to buy into it. So I just never got into it. But um, if you did get in, good, good job, guys. If you got on in on um, Shopify. Tesla's PE ratio scares me. Definitely when your PE ratio is over 1,000, 900, it should be, it should scare a lot of people. Like, let's say, let's take a look at Shopify. I don't think Shopify's PE ratio. Let's take a look at that. Uh, Shopify's PE ratio, forward looking, right? It's at almost 300. You know, a lot of these companies, they're overextended. So I, I kind of like this little pullback that they're having. Tesla's PE ratio is uh, 151. I thought it was a lot higher than that. All right, here we go. PE. TTM, 1,000. All right, this is uh, this is uh, way too high. Thank you, Christopher Tyler, man. Let's go. Uh, hey, I'm here again with the TLT nonsense from yesterday. It's not safe till TLT returns around. Definitely, if you guys don't know what TLT is, it's basically the 20-year treasury yield bond. You know, this stuff is way over really beginner friendly um, investors heads. It's a little bit above my head too, I have to say, but the treasury yields is at an all time low. So when this starts trending up again, I think his name is Christopher, right? Christopher. Yeah. 
Christopher's basically trying to say once this starts turning around again, that's when um, the stock market will turn around as well. So keep an eye on the TLT. I'm going to keep, uh, it's already on my watch list, so I'm definitely keeping an eye on that. It's like you don't know what you don't know. So every day, I like to add on stuff to the watch list. I like to add on stuff to my plate and uh, just digest them little by little. What's a good dividend play? Uh, if you got into, if you got into Exxon Mobil a while ago, that's a good dividend pay. Sell off at 30% profit. You know, some people take profits at a lot of different um, price points. Um, I use the dollar cost average approach to taking profits as well. If you're up a lot, I could just sell a little bit every day until, you know, you have your, until you have your uh, position that you want. Finviz, definitely, I, I looked at Finviz this morning. Supposedly, there's like a 15-minute delay on that, um, on that thing. What do you, what do you think about Starbucks? It's good. I like the stock. Uh, Apple, bro. I like the stock. Ultra group is a great dividend. There's one guy in my discord. He has, I think he had 2000 shares of Ultra group, 2000 shares of Ultra group. All right. M O is the ticker symbol that I'm talking about. What is 2,000 times $44? Um, that's going to be 800,000? 80,000? Yeah, 88,000. Massive, massive portfolio. 88,000, it's just one company. So his dividend checks are going to be coming in really soon as well. Man, we almost are we gonna be able to crack a thousand visitors today on this live stream? For anybody that's brand new here, the companies that I'm buying into very slowly as the price continues to drip down, they're pinned at the top of the comment section. So take a look at it there. Um, over the last hour so far, I've been looking on the Weeble here. We've been looking at a bunch of different companies. We're looking at dividend plays. We're looking at uh, growth plays, EV stocks, and uh, man. One thing that I want everybody to know is I'm not panic selling. I am not panic selling. Add on to add on slow. I'm adding on slowly to the positions that I already own that you know I want to own for the next three to five years. Uh, Bruce, you bought any food companies like Costco? Um, I own Costco in my M1 Finance portfolio, and I slowly add them on over time. I'm not buying any specific food companies like Costco at the moment. Uh, do you have a current position on Amazon? What do you think is a good time to buy right now? Give me a second, man. Your, your, your comment is like crazy big for some reason. So you guys want to know my position in... I can show you guys my position in uh, this really quickly. All right, that works. So this is how much Amazon I own. And yes, it's only less than two shares, but if you look at it, it's $4,000, man. I still can't believe cost per share. I got in at a pretty cheap price, you would say $2,991, but uh, only today it's been dropping pretty hard. So I'm actually down now on my Amazon um, investment. So I would probably look into maybe adding a little bit more into here. How to learn when to sell a stock. So if you went in, so if you caught my morning live stream, go into my morning live stream. Uh, you can definitely learn exactly how I sell my stocks. I typically don't. I would be pretty, I would be pretty scared if a lot of my positions in speculation plays. How much do you invest for $1,000 in dividends? Uh, that's a tough question, man. So, excuse me. So currently, let's take a look at the dividend portfolio over here. I'm seeing about 5,000 in annual income, all right? So this is one year's worth of income. It's not every single month. Uh, it took me about two years to make, get to this level. And uh, over the last few months, I've just been focusing on growth stocks. So that's why my portfolio has been growing in value. 
So, and that's why my dividend yield's been going down a lot. This used to be at 4%. So uh, look at the dividend yields, calculate, you can easily calculate it, right? Um, let's say you invested 1000 bucks, 4% of $1,000 is uh, 40 bucks. All right, so let's say it's 10,000. If you invested 10,000, it will be $400. I think my math should be right on that. So if it's uh, 20,000, it should be about 800,000. So if it's if it's 25,000 and it's 4% dividend yield, that's be that'll be $1,000. Bruce, what's your take on Airbnb? I like the stock. I just missed I completely missed the boat on that IPO. What's the what's the ticker symbol on that? Completely missed the IPO on this. You know it's crazy when entrepreneurs, right, or real estate investors, all they do is Airbnb, right? So let's say if for me personally, if I wanted to put my rental units on Airbnb and just you know, charge people per stay, I could potentially make more than just renting out on a month to month basis. And I've seen firsthand some Instagram accounts, some you like uh, Airbnb um, renters, they make hundreds of thousands a year doing this. So it's, it's pretty amazing how a company like Airbnb would allow you to do that. And if you take a look at the financials, they, they might look not too good, but year over year, um, they're they're going to do better after the pandemic's over, I believe. Christopher Tyler dropping the money, dropping his wallet on this live stream. The incoming crash will recover fully within one to two months. This com compares to the 2018 uh, bond crisis and could play out with the same, could play out the same a check 2018 spy correction. Definitely, you know, most most of the stuff that happens on a day-to-day -day basis is temporary. It's very temporary. Once the stimulus check comes out, once, um, you know, the valuation of these companies start to rebound a little bit and people are thinking like, oh man, might be a good time to buy back in. Might be a good time to buy back in. It, eventually, it will uh, return to its um, normal levels. All right, so for anybody that is brand new that just jumped in, take a look at the comment, the pin comment. That is what I'm buying in today's dip. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but seems like a lot of people are missing out here. We've just downed this uh, Monster Energy drink. It's 4.30 almost. And uh, let's take a look. We almost got 10,000 playbacks. Let's go. We have extended hour we have extended hours now on Weeble. I just found out how to do it this morning. If you guys are interested in how to do that, um, basically you would want to go into, I don't even know how to do that anymore. I completely forgot how to do it. Wow, amazing. It was somewhere around here. Completely forgot how to do it. Will, ooh, this is a good question. Lyft. I like the stock. I think I own some Lyft in, into this portfolio here. Man, I think I sold out of it a while ago. I used to own Lyft in this portfolio. I had like 10, 20 shares, I think. Not in Lyft anymore. Some people are saying, Brandon Lee saying Neo is dead. I don't think Neo's dead. Uh, I already have it. So I'm, I'm not too worried. I think everybody else could find out eventually. Bongo, BNGO. Man, I forgot which YouTuber talks about BNGO. Dude, this is why speculation is bad sometimes, man. I think a lot of the people that are speculating starting to understand why speculating and uh, it's different than investing. 
you would leave, I would leave like 10% of my portfolio, 5% of my portfolio for speculation. Everything else is going into dividend stocks, ETFs, safe place. That's why my portfolio entirely is not down crazy. I, yes, I speculated on buzz and dude, I got crushed on buzz. I am, uh, I got really crushed on buzz. So doing more research on this, that ETF, the buzz ETF, I think it's actually not a good investment when you think about, was it Tom Nash? Tom Nash talking about BNGO. I'll take a look at that. Tom Nash is a former hedge fund analyst. So I would love to hear what he, he says on uh, BNGO. But going back to Buzz uh, ETF, definitely don't, definitely look into it before you buy it because it has a very high expense ratio. So you're going to be paying a lot for them to manage your portfolio. So you're paying Dave Portnoy to be invested in that portfolio. You're paying, you know, the, per, the, the company behind that ETF to manage it. And uh, basically it's an algorithm that does all the work which is, you could say the same thing for a lot of other ETFs as well. Uh, definitely, um, I'm going to be holding on to it for a little bit longer just to see how it does, but most likely I'll be um, getting rid of those eventually. Man, do you guys think I know all these things about Neo because I'm Asian? Because I'm like, I'm Chinese? Like, what, what's, what is it? <laughs> Why is everyone asking me about Neo, man? I think Neo is going to be fine. Like how, how badly are you guys doing on Neo? Like, did you guys buy it like 70 bucks or something? That's why you're wondering if you should be selling it off. Uh, I see why now. I see why now. It's down 5%, almost 6% on the day. And uh, a lot of people probably bought in up here at the $60 range. It's tough, man. It's, it's going to be tough to hold this. You guys are speculating on a lot of things when it comes to this. You know, you, you also got to be a little bit weary of the financials that are coming out of China because sometimes they're fluffed up a little bit. You know, you would have to rely on third party, uh, third party accounting to make sure all this looks right. Did you guys even go into the website and like do your due diligence on this? These are Neo cars. They have, uh, the biggest Neo bull that I know is um, Meet Kevin. I think he owns a ton of this stock. I personally, I don't even like how these cars look. I personally don't even like how these cars look. They have a Neo, they have a engine, a battery engine swapping technology. Seems really complicated. Seems super complicated. I personally, like I'm so, so on the stock. The future is Neo. Definitely, I you know I think EV cars are the future. It's gonna take a little while longer though. The site that I was just at, um, it was basically Neo.com. If you compare the if you compare Neo to uh, Lucid, Lucid does look better in my opinion, but Lucid doesn't even have a haven't even built a car yet yet. Xping, I'm invested in Xping by a third party, Amazon, uh, Alibaba. WTF, that looks like a Urus, Lam uh, Lamborghini Urus from uh, Wish. Do I saw a Camaro yesterday that looked exactly like a Lamborghini. Oh, man. Like all these, like, um, you know, all these cars in America, they're trying to look like European cars. All these European cars trying to look like Tesla EV cars now. We're all borrowing inspiration from each other, man. What's the hype? What's the Alibaba hype? I don't think it's hyped up. I think it's undervalued. A lot of people are, a lot of other people are saying it's undervalued too. So that, that's why a lot of people are buying into it. I'm not trying to hype up, hype up any stock here. Yes, I think it's a it's a Corvette, Corvette that looks like a... Um, Lamborghini. It looked nice though. It looked nice. What's up guys? I'm trying to answer everybody's questions within like seconds. Let's go. We're in a roll, man. I think the monster is kicking in. I feel a lot of these electric car companies are going to end up like the muscle car companies that died out in the seventies. The big brands will stay like they always have. Uh, I think, um, that's one way to look at it, but you have to look at 
um, the data that Tesla's collecting, all right? Now that, and Tesla's uh, way ahead of a lot of these other companies with autonomous driving, I think in five to 10 years from now, a lot of people won't even be, you know, driving the cars ourselves anymore. They'll just be the AI within the car doing the driving for us. I actually trust AI to drive a car more than other humans to drive a car. I think there'll be less accidents. Eventually, we'll, eventually we'll be there. Lo-fi in the background. We got chill cows here right there in the background. We're just chilling right now. Everybody's panicking, panic selling probably because the, the markets are going down. The markets are red. Everybody is uh, looking at their portfolio. It's down a few thousand bucks, a few hundred bucks and... There, you guys have to reevaluate your portfolios. Make sure you're holding your stronger positions, and you might consider letting go of your, you know, spec place. That's what I did last year in the 2020 March crash. I basically sold off all my weakest positions, took that money, took that capital, and bought back into uh, the companies that you know I I had high conviction for. Are Peloton, Alibaba, Tesla, you rec I don't recommend any stocks, but those are some of the companies that I bought a little bit of uh, over today. I, I let my Discord members know first before everybody else. So if you guys want, um, join the Discord, man. Join the Discord, join the Patreon. We would love to have you over there. I basically talk about long-term investing. I honestly suck when it comes to the swing trading, you know, like the, the short-term stuff. I absolutely get... Get stuck on that, man. I don't know, man. I don't know how to get better on that. Just got to keep trying. Hopefully the stimmies checks get in the market up and going again. Definitely when they get passed, I feel like uh, that's going to be a great catalyst for the markets to go back up again. Sold my hotels and cruise line gains to scoop semiconductors. JW is thinking on another level right now. JW, that is probably the... A smart thing. I think that's a smart thing to do. What's the best entry for Peloton at 105, at 100? If you're just starting, I think right now is probably the best time if you're a beginner to get into the markets because, dude, everything is literally on sale from two, three weeks ago. But I would just, like if it was me and it was my first time and I'm just jumping in, I would just buy a little bit. Do you recommend to buy Neo? I can't recommend any stocks. If uh, it's your first time buying it, uh, I would, personally, I would not buy Neo. I would buy a little bit of Tesla. Man, we got another Bruce in here. What's up, Bruce Kai? Um, if you were starting out today and had 5K to spend on the stock, which ones would you pick up in the current market? Uh, I would look up VOO. That's what I would always buy. When you're buying VOO, you're basically buying the 500 best companies in America. Best 500 companies in America. So I'm never too worried about that. We got the Speezy up in here. Thanks for jumping in, man. We're going live for around one hour so far. And uh, so the companies that I'm buying personally today, this Tesla, Peloton, and um, Alibaba. So I'm going to cut this one short. We've been live for an hour. Thank you guys for joining me. Uh, markets are looking pretty decent today. Uh, they didn't crash that hard. So stay tuned. We'll be doing live morning stream tomorrow. So I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Thanks for stopping by. Later.